So first of all, we've got a sheet of foam plastic. It's just regular, ordinary foam plastic, available from any uh, rubber store. We have the permeometer itself, which I'll talk about in a minute. We have a pump to pump water into the permeometer. We have a steel ring to use as a saturation permeometer, and we have a set of cloths and bands which will go together in a way I'll explain in a minute. Well, the first thing we need to do is to put the uh, cloths on the bottom of the permeometer. To do that, first of all, we put out one of these grey, finely woven sheets, which is our air barrier. They're made square deliberately because it's much easier to put the device together when you've got corners to work on. And we have a pad that spreads the water out underneath the uh, thing. And you'll notice I'm doing this on the foam sheet, which prevents anything from getting a hole in it. Okay, place the permeometer on the pad and pull through some of the cloth. You start at the corners, it works well, and then work your way around the machine by lifting the rubber band and pulling the cloth through. Fortunately, you don't have to do this very often. The cloth should last for quite a few tests. It'll last forever unless you damage it. All the cloth is pulled through. Having done all that, you need to get rid of these little wrinkles that are there because they'll let the air in. Quite easy to do, just pull the cloth as tight as possible. Feel the thing go pop as it settles into the curve properly. Okay, now when we're operating we'll need to fold these up or cut them off. It's probably easier to cut them off, but for the moment I'll just fold them up. Next step is to put the permeometer into a flat bottom dish of water. Water, uh, we make sure the stoppers are all firmly in place. We make sure that the big red tap is turned off. We make sure that this little tap, little white tap, is turned off. Now I'm also going to mark at the bottom of this, this inner tube is a, a series of rings at one centimetre intervals on the inner tube. I'm going to place a small piece, piece of uh, black plastic tape at the one centimetre mark so that I can easily see it and so that you can see it on the video as well. Now what we have to do at this stage is to fill up this small tube, that what we're going to call the bubble tube. This is the main tube and the bubble tube. We're going to fill up the bubble tube to this point here. The easiest way to do that is just with a jug or, a, in this case, an ice cream container. That's pretty much the right depth. I'll actually go a little bit further. demonstrate how we adjust this. Okay, we're all set up. We've filled this up. We now have 
the longer of these two tubes protruding one, two, three centimetres below the surface of the water here. Uh, we haven't got any water in here yet, so we get our pump. This is the genteel way to do this job. I find it's often easier just to put my mouth on it and suck. It's quicker. If you do this job and find that you're pumping air instead of water, you'll notice the water rising up in this tube now. If you find you're pumping air instead of water, then you'll find that either the uh, either of these two taps has been left open, so make sure they're shut. Get it as full as you can because you don't know how much water you're going to need to complete the test. When it's full, shut off the stopper and remove the pump. Now for the purposes of this test we're going to use this material which is just the foam plastic I was talking about earlier. It's been moistened by dipping it in the in the water and wringing it out so it doesn't contain much water it's got a little bit in it just enough to keep it damp because it's a little bit non-wetting um, and we're going to use that as a soil material now that's porous material it has pores uh, which are relatively large compared to soils but nevertheless it behaves like a porous material with a range of pore sizes now the purpose of the disc permeometer remember is to measure the hydraulic conductivity in a system without the largest pores. Depending on what suction you select here, it will exclude some pores from the measurement. Perhaps I'll just pull it over here where it's a bit more level. Now you'll notice that what I've done is I've put a relatively large amount of water in here, on like three centimetres of suction in there and at the moment all the taps are turned off so nothing's going to happen unless I have a leak so this is a good chance to check the equipment first of all make sure that this water level is constant there's no bubbles coming up there no bubbles coming up here this water level is constant remember if this is dropping and there's no bubbles coming in then you have a leak around the top same on this one but in this case all our water levels are quite constant and nothing's happening so the machine is working perfectly so what we have to do now is to apply, allow air to flow down into the, through this bubble tube to bubble up through see, three centimetres of water and flow down this tube and be delivered to the bottom of the main tube. Now to make that happen, we open the small tap. We get a couple of bubbles to start it off and then nothing happens. Now why is nothing happening? The reason is that we have three centimetres of suction here and the pores in that foam plastic are too big to allow, the, allow those pores to fill at the suction that we're applying. So what, what we're going to do now is reduce the suction here down to about one centimetre and you'll see that will allow these pores to fill up and allow this uh, foam plastic to have a hydraulic conductivity. So the way we adjust that level is with this small suction bottle. I just squeeze it a bit a bit of water we get a bit of air flowing around the place while I'm adjusting it I've now got what do I have there I now have one and a half centimeters of suction there we've got just the tiniest amount of hydraulic conductivity in that now you can see the odd bubble coming up here it's a two centimeter head there and you can see water is just flowing very 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 slowly so some of the pores will fill at a two centimetre head let's go back Not quite enough let's try a little bit more out now we have one centimetre of suction in here and we have a small hydraulic conductivity you can see from the occasional bubble coming up this water level is dropping and we can measure the hydraulic conductivity of that foam plastic or at least not of the whole foam plastic but of the proportion of the pores in the foam which are still filled at this suction and you can see that 
that's a very small proportion of pores. Most of the pores in that plastic are quite large, so they're still empty at this section. Let's go down another step and get a little bit closer to saturation by removing a little more water from here. We've now got half a centimetre of suction in here and you can see the hydraulic conductivity of that plastic has dramatically increased. And we can now set our stopwatch, take a reading and then later on take another reading to work out how much water is flowing out of our 20 centimetre disc through that foam plastic. Now just as an added demonstration, I'll remove some, all the water out of here so that we're then applying air pressure at the bottom there. Right, now we've got the bubble tube in here is completely free of, uh, of water. So we're now applying air pressure at the base of this tube and you can see the hydraulic conductivity is quite large. The water is running out probably and uh, more likely to be restricted by, by the flow rate in the cloth at this stage than anything else. Now if I add water, the same squeeze bottle, if I add water back to this, push it up to two centimetre suction, things stop again quite rapidly. So we've now not only established the pore size of the uh, foam plastic, but we have established that the equipment is working the way it's supposed to. We're getting, we've now exceeded the suction at which the pores can remain full of water, or well, there might be a few pores there that are getting a little bit of water. Yes, there we are. We've got just a few pores, just enough to flow a little bit of water through the plastic. If I added another centimetre here, everything would stop. And that's indicating the equipment's working properly. I'll put a little bit more in just to demonstrate the point. Three centimetres, which you should see no flow. And that's what we see. Water solutions uh, permeometer operated as a disc or suction permeometer. We'll now have a look at how it works as a saturation permeometer. For outer we need the ring because if we apply water at the bottom of the uh, permeometer at zero suction of course it's going to flow out everywhere. Set the ring firmly into the ground. You can put a board on top of this and hammer it if you wish. Uh, you can put a, a cloth in there if necessary, but we already have the cloth on the bottom of that. Okay, to use this as a saturation permeometer, we don't really need this cloth, but there's no reason why it can't remain there if it's being used for both jobs at once. With just the uh, black uh, discs to allow the permeometer to sit fairly down inside the ring. And in order to stay, you'll notice there's no um, water flowing because we have too much suction in here to allow water to flow out the bottom anyway, and there's no air being delivered at the bottom here. That's easily fixed by allowing air to enter the top here. But uh, what we're going to do first of all, because there's quite a lot of air space in the bottom of this ring, we're going to use the water in this column to fill up the space at the bottom here. So first we'll turn off the white tap, then we'll turn on slowly the, the red tap. I've only turned it on a fraction to allow water to flow out. I'm waiting to see some water appear at the top here. There she goes. I've now got just a little bit of water appearing on top of the ring here. And this, this whole system is now filled with air. So when I turn this tap on, well, I couldn't have had quite enough. We've got a very fast flow to start with. So that must have just filled up the remaining air space under the disc. Now what we're seeing is it's settled down, we're getting a nice steady flow rate into here. We take a reading off this scale against our stop clock. And a few minutes later we'll take another one and another one and we should have a steady change 
in uh, height of water and we should be able to measure our hydraulic conductivity accordingly. So that's the soil water solutions saturation permeometer. I don't know this this use because of the size of this this ring, because of the nature of the beast. Uh, this is a 20 centimetre ring, you're going to get, if you have a 40 or 50 centimetre ring, you get much more soil and a much better average from two or three tests. This one will have a relatively high error because of its limited size. But it's an accurate answer and that's what we need to measure. Thank you very much.